Let's briefly talk about the units here for the ideal gas law. So when we look at the ideal gas law, one of the things that gives students problems is this idea of R. R is a constant, and what it does is it helps all of the units kind of cancel out at the end. So if you're looking for volume, you'll only end up with liters. Or if you're looking for temperature, you'll only end up with Kelvin degrees there. So when we look at R, we see all of these units at the end. One of the big things is it helps things cancel out. What you'll notice is that when we look at R down here, if we have atmospheres, our pressure, that means we'll use this version of R here. And you can see we have liters. That's our volume. So your volume has to be in liters for R to work. We said our pressure here is in ATM, and you'll be given that in the problem usually. So you'll have a pressure, N, that's our moles. So N has to be in moles. And then finally, temperature, that's going to be in degrees Kelvin, or Kelvin degrees, you could say. So all of these units are because R, so everything will cancel out when we're done. So take a look at this. Typically, teachers will give you milliliters, and you know we have to have liters, so you need to change milliliters to liters. You just divide your milliliters by a 1,000. And very often, they'll give you degrees Celsius, and you have to change that to Kelvin. Just add Celsius plus 273.15, you have Kelvin. Finally, grams. Sometimes they'll give you grams for a compound, say H2O or CO2. You need to get that to moles. Just divide by the molar mass of the compound. There's some links in the description for this video how to do these conversions. The point is, you'll always use liters, moles, and Kelvin when you're working with the ideal gas law. For pressure, it's usually given in the problem, or if you need to find the pressure, you can choose whatever value of R you want, and that'll give you that unit. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.